in Revelation chapter number five. I want to talk to you tonight. Did you know you were sentenced? You have been sentenced. All right. How many times is the word sentence in the Bible? Anybody want to guess? I can tell you how many times past has. No, just the word sentence. Okay, I'll tell you in just a minute. But anyway, what I want to do tonight, in, uh, in chapter 5, there was a time when there was a lot of tears shed in the Word of God. The Word of God is telling us here in chapter 5 that all of the body of Christ that was gathered in heaven, they were gathered, gathered before the throne, and uh, they were weeping, and they were crying. And now, you remember, we've already covered this in our study of Revelation. Okay? And it says in verse number 6, And I beheld, and John doing the talking, John being caught up in the Spirit of God, and he said, I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders. All right? There were the four and twenty elders represents the church. All right? And then he said, stood what? A lamb. Stood a lamb. A lamb, a Savior. The Lamb of God. The Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, as it had been slain, never to be slain again, never to be hurt, never to, never to go to Calvary ever again. But he said, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all of the earth. All right, so God's work is complete. All of God's wisdom and all of God's power and all of God's saving, it's God's work here on earth is going to soon, it's going to soon be done. But God's work is done as far as the Christians and the resurrection of the church is done. But look in verse number seven. And he came, and he being the Lord's God Almighty, he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. That's God the Father. All right, he came and he took the book. That is the title deed to this earth. He came and he has the title deed now as we studied and as you have been taught down through the uh, ages of time in your lifetime. All right, now God has told that all the way through the 66 books, 65 books up to this point, then God has told you and I, if you've went to church any length of time, you have learned and you have been taught, and I hope you have learned, that the, all judgment is going to be turned over to the Son. So here the Son is getting out of the Father's hand his rightful deed to this earth. All right? And here he said in verse another eight, uh, verse eight, he said, and when he had taken, he being the Lord Jesus again, had taken the book and the four beasts and the four and twenty elders, which is the church, fell down before the lamb, before Jesus Christ, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, look at verse number nine. He said, and they sang a new song. They sung a new song. Angels can't sing this song. Angels can't bend down and sing it. Angels can't stand up and sing it. Why? Because angels can't be saved. Angels don't know what's singing about the redeemed. I love that song. I've got it. The first CD I ever bought. I bought it when I bought uh, the, uh, the 
owning the first new vehicle I ever bought. I bought a 98 Dodge Ram. And I went to the store the next day and I bought that song, I've Been Redeemed. And boy, I played that sucker till that, I, that oh dear God, I've still got it. And boy, I just play it and I just play it and I just play it. Because I've been redeemed. Hey, what does redeemed mean? Do you know what redeemed means? I've been bought twice by the Redeemer. He made me, then he set me free. It's just like, okay, I told a little story one time. I read it somewhere. It's not original from me by no means. Little boy had a boat. Little boy had a little boat, and he was out playing in a creek with it. And all right, so boy, he was out there in that little old boat just to play in that there, and he had made that little boat. That little boat was his. It was his. And so, boy, the creek got up. He didn't know this storm up, up uh, way up a holler somewhere. And boy, that boat went down the creek. That little boat was gone. A few days later, he went downtown. And he seen his little boat in a pawn shop. In a pawn shop window. He seen it sitting in there. And he went in there and he said, that's my little boat. He said, how do you know? He said, it's got my name on it. He said, I made it with my own hands. And I made it. And I was out and I put it in a stream. And it, it sailed away. And it got, went away in the storms. It got away. And now it's sitting here. And I want to buy it back. Holy ghost of God. I want to buy it back. And the pawnbroker said, it'll cost you. And he told him how much it cost him. He said, I'll pay the price. He said, don't you let nobody else have it. I'll go work it out. And that little fella went to work. And he worked and he worked. And he came back one day. And he said, I've got the price. I've got the price you said that you'd take for that little boat. And the man that had the boat, he said, yes, you've got the price. Here it is. And he went outside and he's holding that little boat. And he said, I made you with my hands. You sailed for me, and I loved you, and I watched you, and I took good care of you. And he said, I loved you so much that you went free. But today, I bought you back. Today makes twice I've owned you. But this time you're mine forever. Because you'll never get, go free, you'll never go away from me again. I'm gonna hold you dear to my heart. I redeemed you today and you're mine forever. Ain't that what God done for you? Amen. God redeemed you. God paid the price and redeemed you. He went to the pawnbroker. He went to God the Father. And he said, I'll pay the price. Whatever the price, I'll pay it. And he said, twice you were mine. And I paid the price, now you're mine forever. God made you in the beginning. And he loved you so much, he set you free. Praise God. And tonight... God owns you forever. And look what he said. He said in verse number nine, and they sung a new song, thou art worthy to take the book 
and to open the seals thereof, and that for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Aren't you glad, thank God, that God loved you enough to pay the price and God sentenced you to reign with him forever. But there's a sentence. And it had to be paid. In Romans, tonight, just for a few minutes, And we'll try to get through this as quick as I can. But tonight, the word sentence is only mentioned 11 times in the entire Word of God. You'll only find it 11 times. All right, you'll find it eight times in the Old Testament. You'll find it in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 9, chapter 17, verse 10. In chapter 17, verse 11 and 11. Two times in verse 11. All right, you'll also find it in Psalm 17, 2, Proverbs 16, 10, Ecclesiastes 8, 11, and Jeremiah 4, 12. In the New Testament, you'll only find it three times. And that's Luke 23, 24, Acts 13, 19, 2 Corinthians 1, 9, and if you want to turn there after you find Romans chapter 3, I'd like for you to do so just for a minute. In 1 Corinthians, if you turn to 1 Corinthians, I mean 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Chapter 1, verse 9. 2 Corinthians. I apologize. 2 Corinthians, chapter 9. I'll give you just a minute. 2 Corinthians, chapter 9. But we had at the sentence of death in ourselves. You were sentenced to die. You were sentenced to die. Now you were born to die. In Hebrews 9.27, the word of God says, and it's appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. You were sentenced to die. And if you go visiting, right here's a good, good verse to keep in mind. But it says, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. God can raise you up if he chooses to. If God chooses to do that, God can do it. And God will do so at the judgment. You've got the sentence of death upon you. And we need to understand this tonight. Church, if you forget me, you've not missed one thing. But if you miss God, you're going to miss heaven. Now, I don't know how many pastors has been in this church before me. And I could care less. But if you forget God, you're going to die and go to hell. Now that's as plain as that nose on your face. Now you can play church. You can play a Christian. You can act like you've been saved. You can walk like you've been saved. You can even run with the crowd that is saved 
but you will die and go to hell without the blood of the Lamb of God because the sentence of death is placed upon you. And I have, you'll never sing that song that I am going to sing. You either love God or you don't love God. You either are God's child or you're not God's child. Now there, it's one of the two. Now in Romans chapter number 3 and verse number 4, the sentence comes from a truthful God. In Romans chapter 3 and verse number 4, and I'm going to go through this because we have got a roughly 20 minutes. I try to dismiss around 8 o'clock because this young lady goes to school. All right? But it says right here in Romans 3 and verse number 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true. Now, I want you to notice something here. Will you let God be true? Well, I don't know about it. I don't know if there's really a God. I don't know if there's really, if He's really all that hype that's made up to be or not. Some people say there's a God and some people say there ain't. And what do you believe anymore? Ain't that the world we're living in? Ain't that, uh, ain't that the way the world's going? All right, but God said, God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but let but every man a liar. Whoo, boy, that'll knock your head around, won't it? Brother Jerry, that, that'll, that'll put a tailspin on it. But he said, but every man a liar. But it didn't say, but let every man be a liar. God said, every man is a liar. When they stand up and try to deny God, God said, they're a liar. Then he said, as it is written. Boy, God just put it down in black and white, didn't he? As it is written. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Your sentence to be judged. Your sentence to be judged. You're going to be judged. You're going before the judge. You're definitely going before the judge. And he ain't going to have on a black robe and uh, some issue, uh, uh, uh Maybelline and hair color and long white, uh, uh, long wavy hair and all of this year. And he'd been sprinkling joy juice over you. Oh, honey, you're of my poor family and all of this year. Brother, you're going to be judged out of this book. It's going to be black ink on white paper. You're going to be judged through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it's not covered by the blood of the Lamb of God, brother, you're going to die. Just stay with me. All right. Look in John chapter number 3 and verse number 36. Let's go. Let's get through this tonight. And keep your finger there. We'll be going back there in a little bit. He said, the Father loveth the Son. Now I told you something earlier, and I want to jog your memory right here. Because I, I don't lie. I told you the Father had put everything in the hands of the Son. Now, if you don't believe me, I want to read it to you out of the book. The Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his what? Could you holler that out, Michael? 
God put everything, hath given everything into his son's hand and his son's name is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Now look at verse number 36. Now this is the clincher. He that believeth on the Son hath. This is a personal pronoun. You either have it right now or you don't have it right now. He said, hath everlasting life and he that believeth not shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now, is that it or not? Take that soul winning with you. Take it with you. Just, just take that and read it to them. They'll say, well, now, it don't really matter if you're saved or not. Now, I mean, you do the best you can, and God's going to understand. Me and God's got, I've heard this up to here. And I'm going to tell you right now, Boy, over in them mountains of Allegheny. Oh, dear God. Man, I'm going to tell you, I, I heard it till I was just sick of it. And I, I just got to where I just read this, and I read this, and I turned this over to him. And I said, God don't understand you. And you don't understand God because you're going to die and go to hell without the blood of the Lamb of God. You and God don't come to an understanding. Either you're saved and go to heaven or you're lost and you die and go to hell. Do you understand that? Now, if you either you understand that and you come to that understanding or you die lost. Amen. Now, right here is what the Bible says. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son of the Son hath everlasting life. But he said, And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. That's not an understanding. That's a fact. And he said, And but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's not an understanding. Brother, that's a fact. John 3, 18 says, He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed on the only begotten Son of the Son of God. Brother, you either believe and believe on God and, and have everlasting life, or you don't believe on God and die lost. God don't... Come to an understanding on your level. You don't make bargains with God. You're sentenced to die. Number three, you're sentenced to an eternal torment without God. In Luke 16, chapter, verses 19 through 31, there's a story in there which is a fact. Oh, old dives, if you'll go back and go into Greek history, it said in there that there was a man by the name of Dives. In this book, it calls, it said, a certain rich man. And it's not a parable because God called names here. God called, said there was a rich, certain rich man, but there was a poor man by the name of Lazarus. In parables, God don't call names. Go back and search out the old history books and go back when we was in Israel. I wanted to check this thing out and his name was spelled D-I-B-E-S. Dives. There was a certain rich man by the name of Dives. And he died and he went to hell. And he had brothers that were left behind. 
And brother, when he died and went to hell, he had his feelings, he had his hearing, he had his eyes, he had his taste, he had everything, he had all of his senses, but the main important thing that he had, he was sentenced to go to hell because he didn't believe. And he didn't ask for a quart. He didn't ask for a half a gallon. He just asked for a drop. But then he asked more than anything else. He remembered. See, all of the members, the intellectual part, he remembered. See, when you go to hell, you're going to remember mama, daddy, sister, brother, and all of this. And you're going to remember all the invitations. And all the times you could have went to church, all the times. You could have went to Sunday school. All the times you could have had a wonderful time in the house of God. And you didn't go. And you missed God's blessings. You missed missed it. Boy, I used to lay out of church. I know Jack and me never done that. But I did. And I had an old, little old skinny preacher. He wasn't bigger than water chewing gum. He come to my house one Thursday night and stuck his finger in my face and he said, you're going to hell. Didn't he? And I told her when he went out the front door, I said, he ever comes back here again, I'll stomp him. I was tall. I'd like to break the block all day long. I was give out. And you think I had time to hear something like that? But on Sunday morning, I told her, I said, get them young and ready. He'll be back Thursday night. Dear God, we got to go to church. And this old brick and block mason, cow puncher or whatever you want to call it, we dedicated his life to God. All because a little old fella wouldn't quit. Go! Oh. Buddy, thing about it, but we're saved for eternal life. Look in John 3 16, for God so loved the world. Oh, what did he say? What did he say in John 3 16? Oh. Oh, I just have to read it. For God so loved me. I believe that's what it says. That he gave his only begotten son that he loved me. Because I believed on him that I should not perish. That he give me everlasting life. Woo! Mm. I believe that's exactly what he said. You can read it any way you want to at your house, but that's the way I read it at my house. Oh, dear God, he gave it to me. Seriously, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Boy, that's as good as it gets. Every time I read, boy, you can feel my heart just picking up right now. You can just feel it picking up. Oh. And then you add verse 36 to it, the last part of it. Hey, I mean the first part of it. He that believeth on him, on the Son, hath what? Everlasting life. Put both of them together. You ought to shout with both feet. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. That's good. I'm sentenced to heaven. I'm sentenced to heaven. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I mean, the dry dead Baptist ought to be able to shout. Amen. Hallelujah to God. I'm sentenced to glory, and all the devils in hell can't keep me out of glory from singing 
in that choir in, in Revelation chapter 5, verse number 9, brother, I can sing, sing, sing the new song with God's heavenly choir. Why? Because God the Lamb has the book and He opened it and He's got my name in it. Brother, glory to God. Brother, I've been sentenced to heaven. Not only that, the saved is sentenced to eternal rest. This old body gets tired. Me and that little girl has worked this week, had to put a brace on her legs every day this week for me and her just to keep it going. We had so much work to do. But we work every day, ain't we, darling? Every day. But in Hebrews chapter 4, I've got a few verses of Scripture, and I've got to, her to get this out. But in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 through 11, real quick. Verses 4, 9 through 11. He said, there remaineth therefore a rest to God's peace, to the people of God. Amen. Boy, I, I uh, run this reference and I'm going to tell you right now. Hallelujah, Brother Gene. Brother, I'll tell you right now, we moved some wheelchairs. Uh, we moved some walkers. Uh, and we moved uh, some dog and old uh, walking canes with feet on them. Uh, and brother, uh, we don't need them, do we, Gene? We don't need a one of them. Uh, hallelujah to God. Why? Brother, when I get the glory, brother, I ain't going to need none of that. Hallelujah to God. Uh, there remaineth therefore a rest to God's people. Uh, verse 9, 10. Uh, now listen. Uh, For he that is entered into his rest, uh, he also has ceased uh, from his own works uh, as God did from his. Uh, after Christ uh, uh, was uh, uh, crucified, uh, after he uh, left that cross, uh, he went to the tomb, uh, brother, uh, and he came out of that tomb. Uh, he uh, was seen 40 days, uh, brother. Uh, uh, brother, after that, uh, he went into the rest. Uh, he went in uh, to the family of God. Uh, he's never going to be beat again. Uh, he's never come him back here to ever suffer anymore. Brother, he went to hell and beat the devil on his own ground. In the first chapter of Revelation verse 16, he came out with the keys of death and hell. Hallelujah to God. Brother, he is the victor tonight. Brother, glory to God. He is, he holds the key to all of it. Brother, verse 11, listen. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Brother, listen to what he says. Go over into the book of Jude. Brother, I, in Jude, in chapter uh, verse number five. Verse number five, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Now listen to this. You think God won't kill you? You think God won't kill you if you say you're a Christian and act like a fool? He said right here, I will therefore put you in remembrance though you once knew this, how that God having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward he destroyed them that believed. go out and you just go out say I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian and live like a devil, God will keep you just as like you'll swat a fly but that's the reason a lot of folks die young talk to a man well I won't go there but anyhow alright your sentence to be saved to have joy in First Peter, in First Peter, in chapter number, verse number one, and uh, chapter number one, and verse number eight, you don't have to turn there. Whom having not seen, yet ye love. In in whom, though now we see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. 
Mm. I ain't never seen him, but boy, one day I will. I'm sinless to see him. I'm saved to eternal glory. Saved to eternal glory. Oh, yes. And listen to this. In John chapter number 14, if I can find it, real quick, and I'll, I'll be done. In chapter, verse, no, chapter 14 and verse number 6, I want to read this real quick if I can find it. Chapter 14 and verse number, no, verse number 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. God never said I'd have a mansion, but God said he got a place for me. Oh, dear God, if he just get me a place by him, that's all I asked. He said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. God can't lie. God said, Dean, I'm sentenced to come and get you. He said, I ain't sending. That dogged song, I despise it. Send that same angel after me that you send after mama. Oh, God. Ever who wrote that needs to get a dose of the Holy Ghost of God. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. Did God say he's sending a taxi cab out of you? May. He ain't going to send. He said, I'm coming to get you. That's exactly what God said. He said, if I go and prepare a place, I. He come and got Stephen and he said, I'm no respect of persons. I don't respect, no, but I don't put nobody in front of nobody else. God going to open up that cloud and he going to look down there and say, come here, boy. <laughs> you big old ugly sucker. <laughs> oh, no. He ain't going to resurrect this body right now. But that spirit's going back to him. But he said, I will come again. And receive you. Look at the personal pronouns in this verse of scripture. I failed. I didn't fail English, but I didn't like it. But boy, look what it says. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. You may be. He didn't say you definitely would be. It's up to you if you don't go to heaven. It's up to you. You may be or you may not be. You may die and go to heaven or you may die and go to hell. It's just as simple as the nose on your face. It's up to you. <laughs>